Uh, you can tell that all we have remaining in our case hive of our Richmond six speed is the cluster assembly, the forks and the cams. And at this time we're going to take out the cluster assembly, lay it on the bench. It's got snap rings in certain places, bearings press on on the ends, and then we will remove our gears. And uh, right now we'll get it out of the case. And notice on the front, our snap ring is on the inside of the case and the rear bearing has no snap ring and our reverse gear is still on the cluster. It lifts out, comes to the bench. And what I'm gonna do is, and to abbreviate this a little bit, at this particular point in time, I think most of you are capable of doing what needs to be done next because it's just snap ring removal uh, on the rear. And we want to, before we do that, I like to get my electric pencil, which I'm not gonna do in this video, but just get your electric pencil and mark the fronts of these gears, the ones that you can get to so that you know the orientation of which way I like to pair them back together and how they ran. So I like to put them back together. They may or may not be able to turn around on the shaft. I'll know that a little bit better here shortly, but I think they will. I think you can reverse these if you want to. You may not be able to the second and third gear set, but um, what you wanna do, what I like to do is take the reverse gear off then press off the end gears because the bearings hold them on. And then I'll take the snap rings off and remove the gears. And I noticed by the shaft that all the gears from this point back load the shaft this way. And then the input set gear loads the shaft from the front. So I'm going to get my electric pencil, mark my gears. You can also, at this time, you can take pictures, videos, whatever helps you in getting yours back together. But like I say, you want to be able to mark the gears on the front and this one, and this one I'll have to get off the shaft before I can mark it. But just make sure you do that before you start washing or whatever process you're going to do. Some people may micro polish the gears and that's probably i'll either micro polish or bead blast so i'll show you what i do before i do that
right, here we have our case hives. The right hive I've already taken off when I first started the disassembly. And you can see I've already cleaned it. And I also noticed the marks on the inside of the case where it had broken a gear. And I know it had broken a gear, but I'm looking for anything out of the ordinary that might need to be looked at as we do this. This tells me that there was parts and pieces on the inside of this trans. So I'm gonna check the main shaft really good because there's a possibility that these gears could have doubled over and caused damage on the inside of the transmission. This is the broken set and those gears double over and they do damage. They push, shift, shift, they push the shafts apart and then you have debris throughout the trans. So this tells me I'm gonna look at the bearings real good. I'm gonna look at the other gears and make sure I don't see anything in our preliminary inspection so that it's not a surprise when we start back together. But this is the right hand hive. I already cleaned it, everything looked good, even though these marks, you could take a cartridge roll and clean those up if you wanted to, but these aren't deep enough that they're gonna hurt anything. We just wanna make sure that there's no metal trapped anywhere. Make sure you take all your drain plugs, fill plugs, take all that stuff out when you do this. Clean everything real well because the, we know that there's little bitty particles in here that could do damage if we put it back together and we don't want to damage our new parts. This is the left hand of the assembly that we just took the main shaft and the cluster assembly out. It leaves our three forks exposed along with the cams and the interlock sleeves and the springs and balls. And right now, these two forks are identical forks. These two, the first, second, the third, fourth, these two forks are identical, but what you wanna do before you take them out, I like to mark them. And you can do that again with your electric pencil and you can write on it in areas that aren't contacting or don't slide into something else. So you could write one, two, and do that on the front side of your fork. Then you know the direction that it goes in. You could do one, two, three, four, five, six and the five six fork is different. So you wanna make sure that you get this fork back in its proper location because it's machined thinner because the sleeve is thinner and the little pads on all of these that I've taken apart, the little pads are facing the rear and the part that's not machined has been facing the front. So I wanna make sure that I get back all these pieces as they are and that's how those are laid out. So when you do this, like I say, mark these. You'll know what location they go back in. And there's our three forks exposing our cams, interlock sleeves, and then this is the other side where your levers go. And your levers go on to the cams for your gear selection. One, two, three, four, five, six. And right now we're gonna take these out because I'm gonna pull these seals out and replace these seals when I do this assembly. Clean up my case, also the drain plug's still in there and I'll remove it whenever I clean it up. All right, why we didn't have this laying on the table was for this specific reason, is that if you're down against the table, it pushes these out of the case and we wanna make sure that we contain the parts that are between these cams. And right now we'll start with the one, two on the rear. And you see there is one of the detent balls. There's our cam. This is our interlock system that keeps you from getting into two gears at the same time. So you might wanna make sure that you locate all the pieces because it's got a little pin on the inside. All this does is keeps you from putting this transmission into two gears at the same time. And while that's out on the table, I've got my little containers that are marked. I just marked mine front and back. And since this is the only set of sleeves and detent balls in the rear, then I'm gonna put everything in this container. 
because I know I've done this quite a bit and I have ground on these pins to make them fit or to get a fit that I'm particularly looking for. So these can be interchanged and cause you not to be able to get your trans into gear or it be hard to get into gear along with the sleeve that is right here. I can change lengths of this to make it a little bit easier or impossible to get into gear. So careful that your parts go back in the same place. If everything's shifting the way it should be in, whenever you took this thing apart, if everything is well, then just keep your pieces together. All right, we've removed the one, two cam and keep in mind these cams are different, but you can put them in upside down, but you're going to know that you did something wrong. The location is, is that the forks are up in these, not down. So you can mark these rear, you know, that's the middle one. And you know, this is the front one. And the location is the forks are up as the case is turned up. So that's the location they're supposed to be in and it won't be turned this way. It'll be turned the way it's shown right now. So right now we're going to take the five, six shift cam out and these should just push through. And if they don't, then it may be that you file a little bit on the area and I'll show you that in just a second, but this is our other set of detent ball springs and interlock sleeves. And we want to make sure that we contain those and make sure they're all there. I've done these before and sometimes not all of it is there. All of it is there. And this is our cam for the five, six, leaving our middle cam, which that's all the detent balls and springs that we've got contained. And this is our middle cam for three, four. And the cams look really good, but at this time you wanna look, like I say, if those didn't, come out relatively easy. You can take a fat, flat file as it's sticking through the other way and kind of just taper that off just a little bit to where these will slide in and out of the case without doing any damage. All right, after we move the cams, the only thing that's left at this point in time before we start our cleanup is the seals for the shift cams. And I like to change these because these are pretty much the last thing in the case. And if you have a leak, or if you're concerned that you've done all this work and you don't want to leak and you want this thing to stay dry, go ahead and replace the seals. And I use just a little lady foot and I go in and ease these seals out just like that. All right, now, other than my drain plug, I've got everything out of this case. And I can spin that drain plug out. And there's our drain plug. And that is everything in our case height for the left-hand side. All right, this is the main shaft out of our six-speed. And what I normally do is check this thing on centers. It's got a drill dimple in both ends. And we do a mic, and then we can a dial indicator and we can pick up on this main shaft and see what the tolerance is. But you don't want anything that's probably four thousandths or under is acceptable of run out. And um, I was, I had, uh, this main shaft is out of a transmission that had some gear damage. And anytime that you have gear damage, you have the possibility of doubling up gear teeth and bending components. And I would highly suggest that if you have a used six speed and you have it apart, that you clean up the gears and you take the gears, check the shafts, make sure they're straight, take the gears to somebody who, who can do magnafluxing and magnaflux the gears to make sure that none of your gears are cracked and all the components are good. And um, we put this 
main shaft in the lathe just to show you normally where they bend at, especially if they've broken a, that was a fourth gear, and this is the end that fourth gear is associated with. As you come up the shaft, it's first, second, third, fourth, fifth is straight through, and then sixth runs on a collar that sits right here on the main shaft. But I was getting ready to polish this main shaft. I was gonna polish it and then do the run out. I should have done it the other way because it doesn't take long to figure out what the run out is on this one. This main shaft is bent and it's bent from, it usually always bends in the small area on the front. And this one's bent from about this area onto the end right here and the run out would probably be probably 30 thousandths or more run out and that is not acceptable and if you try to straighten these things you might have luck with that you might not because normally when you straighten these things they crack and the only way to catch a crack would be to magnaflux it after you straighten it 